Sorry. So green mass, yellow mass. We're going to continue our discussion on how to maintain the mount, and I'm going to sort of pick up where I left off with the previous video, at which we were discussing uh, the two different types of grapevines, and I'm going to define sort of four different types of mounts and what the key ideas are for maintaining position at, in those various locations because it, the, the, the rules change slightly. So, picking up where we left off, we were here, we had the grapevines, and to refresh memories, we said that this type of a grapevine here is good for, for defeating the bump, and that this type of a grapevine here it's good for defeating an elbow escape. So this is what I'm going to be calling the low mount, or some people might just call it the mount. And I'm defining this as anytime my knees are below his elbows. So the main threat is the bump because I'm centered right over his hips, right? So this is where the bump is going to be the most powerful. As a result, that's why you want to be able to be skilled at using, using the grapevine to stop that. The big mistake that you can make from this position would be to connect to his upper body because that's going to help him with the uva. He wants me to be center line and connect to help roll me. So you take a line here like this kind of stuff. You would not want to be like head and arm in this position here. So just basically giving him a trapped arm Right, this kind of stuff. So as he can, so if he starts to bump and roll, you know, it can be hard for me. Go ahead, take it. it. Can be hard for me to stop. It. I'm going to be. It's going to be more of a problem. So because I know, because of this low position, and because I'm right over the power of the bump, I need to be the most aware of that. I want to have wide hands and, and ready to, to activate my hips and this great line at all points. Avoid connecting here from this low position. Now, as we move from the low mount of position to the high mount of position here, all right, like this, and like I said, I'm defining that as anytime my knees are under his elbows, and this is a, this is a really great position, and you should be trying to do this the whole time, because when you do, again, you're getting away from the power of the hips. The further up I am, away from his hips, the less the bump matters. So let's say when I'm centered right here over his pelvis, this is like 100% vulnerability to the bump. Okay, and if I was all the way up here, this is like 10% or less vulnerability to the bump. All right, so bump, bump here, I don't, there's nothing, right? So. The uh, I'm, I have almost no vulnerability, but that's going to be very, very different from this position, right? So, go to bump now. So, yeah, so I got to put my hands on the ground. So, the point is, it's now safe to connect to the guy once once I'm up here. And, and um, so, in fact, I'm going to do a full video on the the way to connect and the way to be uh, effective from this position, but. As just a brief intro, this right here not only would be safe, it would be ideal to go ahead and, and make a connection, start to dominate the elbow, get off the center line, all this stuff. I have to be set up because I don't have any vulnerability to the bump anymore. It's okay to make a connection to the guy. Also, I take my feet and I'm very loose and very relaxed and I sort of... I'm just sort of on the outsides here. And if he's pushing on my knees, the same thing we talked about last time, it's okay. I don't, I don't get rigid. I don't spaz out. If he wants to push on that, that's fine. Go ahead and push. And I let this flex, but I don't, uh, I, I keep the downward pressure with my hip, and I don't let sort of this move here. I, I just keep on. So go ahead and push, push, push. It's okay. I just let it open. He's not going anywhere. So just remember that as a rule, it's super helpful, okay? And just stay very relaxed when you're in the mount. Avoid being rigid, that's when you're more likely to be bumped. So there's one more mount here that's another level up. So we're moving from the high mount into the highest mount or the higher mount. So we're here moving around and now I'm in 
this position here. So this is a all, like offensive terror from, from, from this position here. And I have essentially zero vulnerability to the bump at all here. Now, if he wants to, to turn on his side hard, so if he, would, if he couldn't be able to turn into me, he would have to turn this way. So you go ahead and turn. Well, then we're in our last position here, which is the technical mount. Well, let's talk a little bit about maintaining the technical mount. So for him to escape the technical mount, he's going to want to try to get his, his elbows and, and, and push my foot into, into the, the guard position here or get under it, both of them, and then you know, pull my leg up, all right? So I want to make sure that I'm keeping my heel rigidly connected here to his belly, all right? But again, it's okay if he starts to push on my knee. So he starts to push my knee, I just let it flex. I don't resist. So what happens if I resist? I'm gonna resist now. The whole thing moves, right? You can't, you don't, don't play rock, play water, right? So he starts to push here, just stay real relaxed, real relaxed. And I'm keeping, uh, keeping the heel tight against him. Now, if he starts to use his elbows and he's getting down there close to the heel, well, then I start, then I have to start, you know, getting in here and, and thinking about reacting. And, and the way I can do that is he starts attacking the neck, right? His hands are going to come up to defend the neck. They're not messing with my heel, but in the meantime, it takes quite a bit away from that. All right, and now a few other details here while we're in this position is that it would be, so it's okay to escape this position by going one hand under and then the other hand under, but he has to always take the top hand and go under, top hand under first. So if he goes and digs under with his top hand, makes a little bit of space, and then for the second hand, then he can pry out. So the more emergent of the two, if he's trying to go single hand under first, this one's the one that I have to worry about. If he wants to reach under with this bottom hand here, he's made a terrible, terrible mistake because he's left, he's left the, the king unguarded here, okay? So he's going to take immediate arm lock here on this side. So he's actually put himself in a triangle too. Right? So the arm that really matters is the top arm here. So if he wants to dig that bottom hand in there, you just let him because he's going to give you free arm bar here all day. All right.